securing God's attention. Part one. The Bible said Jesus himself knew what to do. In John 6, 6. If you know what to do, you can secure his attention any day, anytime, anywhere. Our God is a loving father. He loves you so much that he doesn't want you to suffer. All you need to do is to know how to draw his attention to you. If you know what to do. There was no food in the wilderness. The Bible said Jesus knew what to do. And he was able to secure the Father's attention with a thank you. With a what? That was all he said. Father, I thank you and heavens responded. Today, your prayers will be answered in the name of Jesus. But for this teaching, we'll be looking at three ways to secure God's attention. Three ways to secure God's what? Attention. Number one, through kingdom advancement prayers. Through kingdom advancement prayers. Hear these people of God, stop waiting for change. Enforce it with kingdom focus, kingdom oriented prayers. Many think they know how to pray. No, many don't know how to pray. You'll be surprised. Many don't know how to walk. Verse 9. Many think they know how to pray, but listen to me. He said, After this manner, pray ye. This is Jesus speaking, not Matthew. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now look at the next he said, Thy Kingdom come. That will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Stop there. He said, This is the pattern you should pray. Pray for his kingdom first. Is that clear, sir? Then, verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. Your daily bread is number two, not number one. But when you go to prayers, you don't even pray one kingdom prayer. All your prayer, Father, you know I'm going out today. I need a miracle job. That's what you pray since they will not be answered. And some of us pray as if we are different. No, we are the same with you, but we know how to put our prayers. He said, thy kingdom come. So when you pray, put my kingdom first before you say, give me this day my daily bread. But you have not prayed for his kingdom. Or you pray, Father, as I'm going out today, I need miracle job. I need breakthrough. So you pray and pray and pray and fast. It's not coming because you are misplacing it. You are what? You are misplacing it. You are putting the secondary before the primary. The primary is that kingdom come. Then give me this day my daily breath. So I hear so our number one priority in prayer should be his kingdom. Should be what? Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, Matthew 6, 3, and every other thing shall be added unto you. So you pray to resist hell from stopping the growth of his church because I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, Matthew 16, 18. You pray for salvation of souls. When I say kingdom prayers, this is the place. You pray, oh God, Nothing will stop your church from advancing. Are you going to sit down? Nothing will stop. Souls will be one today. You pray for the advancement of his church. You pray for his word to prevail. When we make kingdom prayers, that it is. You pray for souls to be what? Saved. You pray for the word of God to have free course. You pray for establishment of the new covers. You pray for fresh oil on the chosen vessel. Oh God, give the pastor who is praying today the word of God. Let Matthew 6, 33 become your life style. When you do that in secret, God will reward you in the open. Every time you are the altar of prayer, put his kingdom first. At that time, you secure his attention. The one you say, Father, before you open your mouth, God has answered. May God hear you in the name of Jesus. Are you hearing me? He said, this is the pattern. This is the what? Pattern. He said, this is the pattern. Listen, you know why he says so? The apostles came to him. They said, Master, we discovered that your own prayers, you get results. 
There must be something we are doing where you are doing different from us. That one, if you read from, bring it back. See how it came. Came to pass that as he was praying in a starting place, when he ceased, one of his apples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. The way you are praying is different from the way we are. They were praying long, long prayers without what? Results. The results were not there. So what you guys say you pray? Four hours. Today we do all night. Four hours. Then you open your eyes like the four hours. If you say we bombard, <laughs> we bombard everywhere. Four hours. With the prayer. But your prayer, the result does not match your prayers. Some of you, every day you pray. You're, when you pray, I tell the pastors with me, I say, my own is, if you pray, also watch. The thing I'm praying, does the result match what I'm praying? Not we did 15 all nights. If I do one all night, you see it to reflect. I, if I pray one all night, you see it was reflect. I don't believe in long, 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 long prayer. We are praying. You are not a religious man. Put your prayers well. Some of you, you know, you believe in, you know, well, salvation means you know they pray. If you see how we pray, we tell you know they pray. Come and pray with me. Come and pray with me. If you, if you, pray, if you can pray with me for 45 minutes, pray with me one hour, your leg will do like this. Just pray with me one hour. Because by that say it is written. It is written. It is written. Ah. Because that's what they pray. Do, this church, don't say we pray. You won't see us pray one prayer without the scripture. I, I'm sure you came from other churches where it's the people that you're praying. No scripture. Nah! Bind the devil. Bind him. Tell him. Let him. God. 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 Pray. What is God? God. Pray. What is God? Pray? There is prayer. Now. Pray. Pray. Husband, come. Husband, come. Husband, come. Call him. Ford. Which guy is prayer? Call your husband. Call him. Call him. Call him from the bedroom, from outside. Call him for it. Prayer. That is, and that's how many of you think that you're praying. He said, call him now. There's a husband. Wherever you are, I call you for it. You will do like that. I call you for it. I call you for it. I call you for it. Come from the heaven, from the earth, from everywhere you are. Come. If they hold you the covers, get out. Get out. <laughs> it's prayer. It's what? It's prayer. Ah. If you pray like that, you would have been able to push the devil out. Just say, please don't deceive yourself. This is not how to pray. When you pray, put my kingdom first. So before you even open your mouth, bam, I hear you. That's how to secure my attention. To secure my attention, put my kingdom first. Immediately you do that, my attention will turn. May God hear you from today. Yeah. Number two key to secure God's attention is so winning. Is what? So winning. So winning is for all. After you pray kingdom advancement prayer, make sure you are a soul winner. So winning is the most rewarding adventure in the kingdom of God. Now let me say this to you. It's a sign of irresponsibility to be encouraged to go out for soul winning. For instance, we are going out on Saturday. For them to not beg you, will you come? No, it shows high level of what? Responsibility. They don't need to force you. He said, go ye into the world and pray what? Because every one of us, Mark 16, 15, and this sign shall follow that I what? Believe, verse 17. So here, you become a sign by going out to win souls. In John 15 and verse 16, he said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it unto you. Did you hear that? Look what he said. He said, you have not chosen me. Just go and win souls. And then when you open your mouth, I will give it to you. Did you hear what God said? He said, go and win what? And then if you open your mouth, you draw my attention. Say so here. Are you getting what God said? He said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And ordained you that you should go and bring forth what? Bring forth fruit. It's not talking about mango. It's talking about souls. It's talking about who? Maybe not that they say you go and bring forth fruit. It's not harvest. You know where we're coming from? Bring forth fruit. You bring yam. And that's not what God said, though. You know, people read the Bible and they say bring forth fruit. You know where we are coming from? You bring forth yam, good. <laughs> bring forth souls. Bring forth what? That's how the church died. Instead of bringing souls, they're not bringing yam to the altar. Bring good. <laughs> Why are you not bringing good to church? They bring God, they bring God. Bring God. They say, going, going, gone. Bring God. God said, bring forth souls. Bring forth what? Not good. 
Which goat go make water corn? <laughs> you know, bring yam, bring uh, plantain. Not one soul is brought to the church. So the church just died. Bring forth fruit. Don't go and bring forth papa from you. <laughs> bring forth what? Souls. Read the Bible very well. Before you say, you don't say, say bring forth fruit, so we are bringing forth papa. Papaya, or whatever you call it. And that your fruit should what? Okay, if you say bring forth fruit, this is fair. You say your fruit should remain. That means I leave the papa there until it remains. <laughs> or plantain there, my friend. It's telling you to bring what? Souls. And that whatsoever you shall ask of the friend in my name, he will give it to you. So at that time, you just draw my word. Attention. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. So soul winning generates answers to prayers. Generate answers to what? From today, God will answer your prayers. Let me say this. If you don't want to suffer prayer frustrations, then get involved in soul winning. Get involved in what? Soul winning. When you enter that group, this is how it happens. As I said, five verse twenty-four, he said, "It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer, and while they are yet speaking, I what? I will hear." He said, "Before you even open your mouth, I have what? Answer." Do you like that club? We have two class of Christians. The old level Christians ask shall be given, seek you shall find, knock shall be what? O level, A level Christians as to before you even talk, God has answered. Before you say, "Oh God, I need car," somebody would drop car and say, "See the car here." But oh God, I need, I need the, the thing is available. And that's the class I belong to. Do you like that class? Yes. We, don't, we don't ask. If I tell something from 1997 to date, I've not asked for money. My wife is a witness. I've never, this church has never, have you ever come to this church that one day they will say, pray, let's get money. Have you ever seen that prayer point? <laughs> this group, they don't ask for money. But she, your prayer request, say the truth. 95% of your prayer request is around money, school fees. House rent, if I see trip, this one, everything is around money. And I've not prayed for money from 1997. Those okay, nine get money now. What are the days I don't get money? Why no pray? 97, I, my, I know how much my income was. I didn't pray for it. So you would say that, well, God don't bless us. So I didn't go pray. That time, there was no dime. I never had any account. I didn't pray. So it's not that. I didn't pray when there was no 1,000 in my account. I knew what to, to do. I just go out for so winning and money comes. I didn't pray for money. So you don't say that. You know, some of you are very funny. Say, I didn't go pray for money when God don't bless us. That time, I did not have 1,000 in my account. I did not pray for money. So I hear. I'm telling you what I know. I'm not preaching what I don't know. Are you hearing me, sir? All this, oh God, oh God, touch commissioner, make him commission me, touch governor, make governor me. No, he said, What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose what? His own soul. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Matthew 16 26. A soul is the most valuable treasure on the earth to God. So, one thing is that when you're a soul winner, you're on God's payroll. You're on God's what? Payroll. Just be a soul winner. Just be a what? You'll be on God's payroll. I'll show you. In John 6, John chapter 4, 34 to 36, John 4, 34, we say, Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Say nothing, they are yet four months, they are coming to harvest. Don't say they are four months. Don't say later, later. Do it. Now, build ourselves to lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white, ready to harvest. And then verse 36. He that reap and received what? He said, if you go to win souls, I will pay you. Can God pay you and any devil stop you? Can God put you on the payroll and economy stop you? He said, and gather fruit unto life, what? You've had fruit against souls. The body that's standing that even made the together. So God is saying, just go and win souls, I'll pay you. I'll do what? May God pay some of you, all of us who are winning souls. Just be a kingdom fisherman. Be a what? He said, I'll make you fishers of men. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. And in Matthew 17, 27, he said, go and cast the hook. Open the mouth of the fish. So every time you win a soul, there's a coin God has for you. So every time you win a soul, go to God and say, God, I want a soul. My payment. And God will pay you. God will do what? For every soul you win, you're on the payroll of God. So I hear. 
It qualifies you for his payment. May you, may you have his, your payment in the name of Jesus. Yeah. You shine as a soul winner without struggles. Daniel 12 verse 3. It is those that are on the move for souls that end up as movers. If you're on the move for souls, you end up as a what? Mover. If you're on the go for souls, you'll be a goal getter. Just keep moving. Just keep winning souls. So here, you can't be a soul winner and be broke. Just keep winning what? You draw his attention without sweat. So here, do you want to enter that group? Hmm? Number one, kingdom advancement work. Number two, soul. Now, there are three. A three-fold core cannot be what? Broken. If you want God's attention, just do these three things. Number three, be a giver. Be a what? Be a giver. Be a what? A giver. John 10, 17, 18. Therefore doth my father love me. This is Jesus speaking. Because I laid down my life that I might take it again. I gave my life. No man take it from me, verse 18. But I laid down of myself. I have power to lay down, I have power to take it again. This command my is of my father. Sacrificial giving secures God's attention. Secures God's worth. God will always respond to a sacrificial giver. Always. You can't give sacrificial and God will not respond. You give attention. Now listen carefully, people of God. A man called Solomon in the Old Testament wanted God's attention. Wanted God's what? He wanted God's attention. He was asked to rule Israel when he was a small boy. His father, David, has ruled, fought and fought. So the Lord said, look, I don't want to fight like my father, David. But I want to rule Israel. Give me an understanding heart that I will rule these people without any crisis. Turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 3, 3 to 5. I want to look at it. Don't just look at it carefully. And Solomon loved the Lord. Did you hear that? So the thing that moved him first was what? Love. Walking in the status of David's father, only he, take note, only what? He didn't say only they. Only him. Sacrifice and born incense in high places. Only him. That's why others did not get money with him. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. For that was the high, great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar. In Gibeon, the Lord did what? Say, God gave him attention. Say it one more time. God appeared to Solomon in a dream by night and said, ask what I shall give thee. <laughs> Do you hear that? If God tells you, ask what I will give you. Is there anything remaining again? Just imagine God doesn't tell me what I'll give you. Now, the moment Solomon dropped the offering, God said, ask me what you want. He, he was able to draw God's what? Attention. Every time a quality offering is given, God turns. When Abraham dropped Isaac, God turned and said, hey, Abraham, I'll give you attention. Nobody will be like you. I'll bless, I'll bless you. No nation on earth can, from your loins will ever match them. And God said, by myself, I have I sworn. May God swear concerning you. Amen. God will give any man, will give sacrificial attention. David gave, gave him attention. Abraham gave, gave him attention. Noah gave, gave him attention. Jesus gave, gave him attention. Solomon gave, gave him attention. I gave, and God gave me immediate attention. You can't give, and God will not give you attention. So I hear. Immediately God will turn and say, ask me anything you want. May God say that concerning you. Yeah. Look at verse 13. I'll read from 12 for better understanding of those who may not know the story. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Look, I have given thee a wise and understanding what? 
this was Solomon's request. Solomon said, give me a wise and understanding heart. That was Solomon's request. So that there shall none like thee before thee. Neither after thee shall any arise like what? Unto thee. Look at 13 together. One to go. To go. Let's see together. One to go. And I have also given thee that which has not what? Both. Stop first. Somebody did not ask for money and God gave him. Do you like that kind of thing? How many of you have been praying for money? I don't pray for money. I, I, just, I just give sacrificially, lavishly. There's a young man who prays in this church. He said, let's thank God lavishly. So you, when you give what? Lavishly. God will give you what you did not what? Ask for. It's right here. I, do you like that kind of Christianity? Let me tell you. The reason why many of you go is not is your stinginess. You are too stingy. Hey! Giving has nothing to do with I not get. It has to do with your nature. Giving is a nature. Giving is what? It has nothing to do with that. I've been giving from the day I never had. Giving is a nature. There are people who have all the money. They are stingy. Giving is a nature. It's a what? If you're stingy, let them give you the whole world. You still be stingy. I've not seen stingy people before you meet them. They say, <laughs> they never pay us. So. <laughs> I've been a giver from childhood. Christianity only polished the giving life. I've been a giver from my childhood. When I go to school, my provision will finish before everybody. Giving was my lifestyle. So it's not, it was not difficult when I became born again. I just, I just, just polished it. But most of you came from background where your mother told you, no, say uh, family. We, 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 we need to go, oh God. Keep on well, oh. keep on well, oh. No, we see another one. Oh. So you are used to grabbing, keeping, keeping. How can you have one dress for twenty years? One dress, one, one cloth. You say I, I have this cloth, nineteen seventy nine. Finish. So nobody is qualified to wear a dress. You keep a cloth of 1980 now? That's a problem. They said, this shoe, I don't like to give anybody, I don't, this shoe is 20 years now. Shoe, 20 years. There's no shoe I will wear in this world, no matter expensive. Beyond five years, I'll dash it. Not because I have plenty that I won't wear it. For what? I do not, I do not produce shoes again in the world. Stingy people, they say, no, this cloth, I bought it in 1984. <laughs> the cloth, your size is bigger than it. You see the force they wear up. <laughs> you see force yourself inside. Even when you wear it, they say, yeah, this kind of cloth, when we black, they overall. <laughs> My friend, give it out. You are too stingy. Too what? Stingy. Too stingy. Akachi. Solomon did not pray for money. I have not prayed for money from 1997. I don't pray. Not that I don't need money for it, but I won't pray for it. I know what to do. He said, both riches and wealth, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto the older days. So here, I said, a greater than Solomon is here. Matthew 12, 42, the B path. So as the Father sent him, so sent her you. John 17, 18. My friend, giving is living. You want to draw attention of God? Be a giver. Be a what? Now listen. God called me into ministry. And I knew it was well. <laughs> Who will I beg in Paragot to give me money? So I knew that I needed God's attention to help me. So one day they were taking offering for the first aircraft. For missions, I will never forget 1996. And I said, God, I'm a Bible school student. What do I do now? God said, all your electronics, every electronics you have, give me. God does not eat electronics. But he wanted me to shift. So I put electronics in the car, drove from Victoria Island to Yenakwaja. As I dropped the offering at the gate, I didn't say, Pastor, pray for me. You don't need anybody to pray for you. It's your heart. I just dropped the offering. As I was turning, he said, you will never beg in ministry. That was where I broke the backbone of poverty. And when I became a pastor, the first money I ever heard as a pastor was seven to three thousand. 
bulk money as a pastor. I had no car. And I wanted God's attention. I wanted God's what? Attention. I had no car. And the voice said to me, you need to buy a padded V-boot. Then the used padded V-boot of 500,000. Then this church needed innovation. But I knew the secret, that kingdom first. So I said, how can I buy a car when church needs innovation? So I said, well, let me give 700,000 out of 723. I gave 700,000 for innovation of the church and then used 30,000 to buy books. Heaven responded. Boom! I shifted to another level. We had the first crusade. I had about 1.6. I'm going to preach. 2003. God said to me, give me 1.5. 2003, my income was 1.6. How many years ago? 13 years ago? 20 years? 2003. Is it 2003? 20 years ago? 20 years ago, my income was what? 1.6. Are you? My income now is your brain. You, you need to do mathematics. <laughs> And I gave 1.5. I gave what? 1.5. For crusade. That I'm to preach. 2012. God said to me, give me $1 million. 2012. That's how many years now? How many years? 11, huh? 11 years. He said, give me $1 million. That's 770 something millionaire. And I gave. Heaven's open. I've never, I've been drawing God's attention with giving. With what? Giving. You see, God, you know, say, you know, say things tough for Nigeria. That's why you have not drawn his, the tougher the country, the freer your hands should be. If you remain with all this religious thing, pray, you know, go pray for kingdom. Go for some winning, you will not go. Give, you will not give. Okay, what do you want? For that, give me a husband. For that, give me a wife. For that, give me children. For that, give me a job. God said, me too, what do you go give me? Leave all those prayer points. They are not prayer points. Focus on these three things I've said. Go and pray for the advancement of his kingdom. Go for soul winning. Be a generous giver. Before you open your mouth, bah! God will say, yes, yes, yes. I mean, yes, Solomon. This is the secret. Not... Your head go pain you. No matter the question, your answer is in Matthew 6, 33. It is time to secure the attention by putting what you have heard to practice. Light is of no value unless you work on it. Put what you have heard to work. I close with John 13, 17. Read the scripture together. One to go. One to go. If you know these things, happy are ye. It didn't say if you know happy are ye if you copy them. It didn't say if you know happy are ye if you quote them. Go home and do these three things. Are you hearing me now? So I receive grace. To pray for the kingdom. To go for soul winning. Go for soul winning. Then be free and dead. Be what? Don't see. This is not people they turn because God don't bless them. I was giving when I had nothing. So don't say it now. When I had what? So giving has nothing to do with how much you have. It has to do with your lifestyle. If you are not a giver, you are not a giver. Even if you have the whole world, you still not be a giver. True? 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 Who is a giver? Is a giver. If you meet a giver, if the person has one orange, the person wants to tear it, say, let me give you some. But if you meet a stingy person, the person will wait till you go away. If you meet a giver and the person has a plate of rice, you say, come bring plate, let's eat together. Take some. But when you meet another giver, he'll wait till you go before you eat the rice. If you meet a giver, he has 10 clothes, he wants to give one out. You meet another say, ah, this clothes ever, you know they do, I one by one. A giver is a giver. A giver is what? There's a woman in this church, I, my own convert. I was the one that led the woman to Christ. This woman 
was selling fruits. She would come like this, give me apple. It, it, the apple has no value, but you know that this place is a giver. She would carry apple. I would say, God bless you from apple. She's done, moved to another level. Today she's selling clothes and she has a car. But I'm, there are people who are thinking, oh God. The way they are, <laughs> they're, they're sitting by your side though. They asked. <laughs> Stinginess is the spirit. I can't stand anything. I can't stand a stingy person. It, it pinches my body. If you're stingy, it irritates me. This world, where do you go carry money to? You go die after now. Not, not that you die now. I mean, but about 100 years. You go go. Where do you go carry the money to? This morning. You go, you go die with them. If you have anybody who died, they carry money, bury with them, bury with them. Are you living move you the way you live as if money is God? Give it for what? Even as you are giving offering now today, you go, this is how you do. If you bring water, they say, for what? For what? For what? For what? Then, if you bring, I don't, but you all know now, they are confusing. If you bring like 50 dollars, <laughs> Nigeria knows they are confusing now. If you get 50 dollars, yes. There is a transfer money. Where you have to transfer? Now 5,000 transfer. <laughs> you got to say, I, I used to transfer to my church. Transfer 5,000. <laughs> Why they bought Coke and mineral for 10,000? If I is your size, no problem. Huh? But some of you, you know your size. You say, I, I, no, I don't like giving, I like to transfer. <laughs> how much you transfer? God knows how much big money. <laughs> 1,000 naira. Then his own size, the clothes he's wearing is 15,000. God is a prodigal son. At this level, you will remain this level. Change your life, style, be free handed. Rise to your feet. Sigh so here. Are you blessed this morning? Will you join me to pray? Will you join me to pray? And get the results? Say, Father, I will pray for your kingdom. I'll be a soul winner. And I'll promote your kingdom with my giving. I receive grace to put these things to practice. Go ahead and pray for yourself in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Now the prophetic with David Ibiomi. Go and this month as it's ending, I decree frustration to end. Amen. This week shall be to you a week of open doors. Amen. Everywhere you have been frustrated, there shall be light for new face. Amen. As you put this kingdom first, I decree everything you're looking for shall drop to you. Amen. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is well with you. It is well with you. It is well with you. In Jesus' mighty name.